What's up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some high clearance brass links from RC Steve on Instagram. So uh, these links are brass, as you can see, they're handmade. Um, they were around $50 shipping and handling and everything. So that's pretty expensive if you ask me, but uh, we'll see how these do. So first things first, I'm gonna remove the body off of the C10. All right, so the body's off and just because it's off, I'm just gonna remove this little tag right here clear things up so that tag's gone now and so now um we're gonna take a look at the links so in the package it's sealed pretty good so rc steve makes links for the deadbolt and the c10 jeep platform so you want to get uh, the links specific to whatever platform you have so included okay so we have the longer high clearance links we have the shorter ones we have two of these links. These are the, the Y link. Um, so you're gonna need a, these little spacers right here to make a Y. And then we just have this medium size link. And so these are made out of brass, I believe. So they should be a bit heavier down low for the C10. So that's all laid out. First things first, I'm going to remove uh, the wheels off of the C10. So I wanted to remind you guys, if you're interested in winning this Axial SCX24 Jeep Wrangler indoor build, um, remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram at Miguel Cortez Video, comment on a video in this build playlist, any video, and remember to like the video, and that's pretty much it. It'll be free, I'll ship it out to you anywhere in the lower 48 uh, states. So yeah, good luck. Now that the tires are removed, I need to remove all the links off of the chassis and take out all the ball joints. So um, the RC Steve links don't come with any ball joints, so there's an easy way to remove them. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So I have removed uh, these links off of the C10 right now. And so now I'm gonna grab my Wear 1.3 hex. If you're interested, check it out. Links in the description, it's a quality tool and I use it in all my videos. So I'm gonna grab the hex. I'm gonna put it through the ball joint and gently, if you press gently through um, the link, if it doesn't go through one side, it's pretty typical, just flip it around and press it out. Let me see if I can get this. There's a lot of mud and stuff on these links. All right, so I've been having some difficulty removing these balls from these links because I think of all the mud on them. So luckily I have the same exact links that were saved from a previous build and they're brand new, well, gently used. So I should just be able to pop out these links, or these balls and these links and save them. So yep, there it is. So pop it out. There's one. And there's two. And so that's what we want um, from our old links. Set those to the side. And now, I'm gonna grab our new link and we're just gonna insert ball and so there is what the new link with the old balls looks like so it's pretty simple pop out the old balls from the old links pop them into the new ones and so there is a one complete link so now i'm gonna do the same exact thing to the next one and we'll just repeat the process all right so when i like to replace these links i like to do a set of them at a time so i don't mix them up so now this set is done i'm gonna put this set in and then we'll take the next set out and we'll just rotate back and forth. So here's the first set of links on the C10. It was pretty simple. Um, as long as you're able to pop out your old balls and pop them into your new links, um, it should go pretty smooth. I do recommend doing one set of links at a time so you kind of keep things organized. So now we're gonna move on to this Y link, which is a little bit different because provided we don't have a Y link, uh, brass Y link. So it's gonna be a little bit of creativity, but uh, it, it works. So we're gonna do that next. When working on the Y-Link, I found it easier to disconnect the shocks so that the whole front end just drops from the frame and you can get a little bit more access down in here behind the servo. So I recommend doing that if you're gonna work on the Y-Link. All right, so here is the old Y-Link and it clearly looks like a Y or a V, whatever you wanna call it. And these are the links that we're gonna replace it with. And so you might be like, hey Miguel, that does not look like it's gonna work out, but it does. So we're gonna angle these links like this and then we have these spacers and we're gonna use these spacers to make up for the room where these two meet on the, the, on the mounting point behind the servo. So that's how it's gonna work out. Also worth mentioning that uh, the Y-Link doesn't have balls um, 
at these two points. There's only one down here. So if you want to take that one out, you can. So I was able to get the wire links onto the front of the vehicle. I realized, I th at first I thought these little gray things were spacers, but it looks like they're balls. So if you ever lose a ball, you got a couple in the kit. But uh, now I'm looking at it and I realize that I put this link in the wrong spot. So this link is supposed to be the bent one that gives you the high clearance and I put it in the wrong spot. So I have to move it from back here, from right here to back up here. They're almost, they're like, they're like a millimeter off from length. So that's why I kind of was just not paying attention. So it'll be a quick fix. So just remove that one, move it up here. And then the bends go out. They don't go towards the middle, they go towards the outer ends of the truck. So the bend part goes closest to the wheel. So I'm gonna do all that and then we will see how it looks completed. All right, so about 25 minutes later, all the links are on to the C10. Um, you can tell that they're in the right positions now because the bends are in the cocker. The bends are in the proper spots. So there they are. Um, I recommend connecting the link down here in the center plate right here and then connecting the outer towards the axle. Because um, when it moves on the axle, there's too many articulations that kind of make it difficult to kind of get connected here. So I definitely do that. Um, the weight, I mean, it feels like there's added weight, I guess, um, if it's brass. So yeah, pretty simple install, nothing too crazy. I definitely recommend cleaning your vehicle before you start working on it because it was dirty and it made things a lot um, harder than they should have been. So now I'm just gonna put on the wheels, tires, and body and then we will check it out because the Impala is here today to crawl. Yeah. All right, and so there are all the links on the truck with uh, the wheels and tires on and the body. And there is the high clearance. So it gives you a little bit more room when you want to go over rocks and stuff down low. And we added some weight. So that's pretty awesome. So finally, the Impala is back and covered. So we're going to do an Impala drill. Turn that guy on. Turn that guy on. We're all set. Also, um, there is the previous C10 building. If you want to check it out, there are the Hot Racing Normal Links. So there are some Normal Links, if you can see. See right there, and here are some high clearance links. So you can see a little bit of a bend right there that'll allow a little bit more clearance when you're going over rocks. So yeah, so let's see if we can get this guy going. There we are. There is uh, the C10 with its first round and Paul Girl. Um, right now, I don't really know the direction I want to go with this build. Is it going to be a no budget build? Is it going to be a belly dragger build, a comp build? I really don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know in the description or in the, in the comments actually. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.